Hi everybody, how you doing? Welcome to the latest episode of From the Rock to the Cloud. And as you know, uh, on this series, we always talk about exciting things that are happening in the world of server. And, um, you know, we talk about all things, uh, you know, Windows Server 2019, and maybe some older editions as well, but also some futuristic stuff, stuff that happens in the cloud, things that you can do all together, all at the same time. And as always, um, you know, we love your comments, we love your feedback, make sure you're talking to us, making sure uh, you're letting me know if there's anything you want to find out or want to talk to an expert, then we'll get that expert and we'll talk to them about um, the relevant technology that makes this such an exciting industry. So um, talking about experts, um, we found another expert. New expert alert. Oh, there we are. That's um, we haven't got the budget for a big alert. That's uh, Lisa in the house. So Lisa Clark is our expert today, um, coming to us from um, the sunny realms of Scotland. Is yes. that right, Lisa? That is correct. Yes, I am coming to you live from Dundee, Scotland. Dundee, also known as the city of discovery. Um, and apparently, the it, we have a big ship called the Discovery. It's very old. So that's why we've called the City of Discovery. Um, and apparently the most sunniest city in Scotland. So there Very you go. Very nice. Um, and Does also, it, that, mean, it's um, not, that, doesn't mean it's, that doesn't mean it's always sunny. <laughs> it means it's the sunniest no. city in Scotland. <laughs> But you, I mean, you're obviously um, uh, sort of moonlighting for the uh, for the, you know the, the tourist board tourist board of Dundee. Uh, I must admit, I like Dundee cake, so um, you know mm. we're, we're we're in the right place. Um, so, <laughs> that's, all, that's all cool. And so um, we're going to talk to you today about some maybe Azure Stack HCI, HCI. Oh, I can't even say it. So I love I love a good tongue twister. Um, don't we all love acronyms in in the world of IT? Yes. Um, and also yes. Windows Server HCI and kind of maybe what the differences are and kind of again there's two things that are out there. It's a bit confusing. What's the right thing to yes. use? Maybe kind of we'll, we'll talk about that. But could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, obviously you're from Dundee, which is great. Um, and <laughs> um, you've got your own you've got your own series of uh, of yep. you know live streams that you do so let's 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 find a little bit out about lisa well like, why are we talking to you today <laughs> so my name is lisa clark based in dundee scotland i've actually been in the it industry for about 10 years um i currently work for dell technologies um in the global engineering outreach specialist team team geos for short um and catchy. i am I, <laughs> yeah catchy also another tongue twister um, and my role, I cover EMEA, so Europe, Middle East and Africa, um, but my role is to um, drive Azure Stack uh, business across EMEA. Um, and it's also to evangelize the Azure Stack products and um, to enable our sales and our pre-sales and our customers to get the most out of the Microsoft hybrid cloud offerings, um, which is super cool. I actually love my role. Um, I'm also a Microsoft MVP. I became a Microsoft MVP in March of this year. Um, Woohoo! Um, I also have received some Microsoft, um, they're called badges, they're um, little badgers um, on the Ethereum blockchain. So I've got inclusive, inclusive leader award and community award. So that's pretty cool. Um, and yes, yeah. I have my own, I have my own podcast called Lisa at the Edge. Do you like it? Do you like that? Edge nice, all at the well. Edge these days. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll make sure we get like, a little kind of pop up. To yeah. for you. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Not to be confused with Lisa on the edge. Um, although some people have suggested that I uh, do a spin off and uh, do some episodes where I rant about uh, things that annoy me within cloud and technology. <laughs> but maybe we'll, <laughs> like, maybe we'll do that. I would maybe watch we'll it. Do that I would watch it. Yeah. <laughs> what what, what oh. Brian's latest is. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So, oh, no. That's me. You know. Well, look, we're, we're incredibly grateful to have somebody that actually knows what we're talking about rather than people just listen to me talk about um, what I think I know rather than what, what somebody actually knows. Um, look, let's jump into the subject matter at hand. Uh, Windows Server HCI and Azure Stack HCI. So I know that HCI is hyperconverged infrastructure, um, but what is the difference between Windows Server HCI and Azure Stack HCI? Yeah, okay. So um, Azure Stack HCI is a new purpose-built um, HCI operating system from Microsoft, uh, but delivered as an Azure service. Um, so the new Azure Stack HCI operating system was 
GA'd from Microsoft, from your cells in December of 2020. Um, and then the likes of uh, various OEMs um, brought out their own offerings around that. So at Dell, we brought out our integrated system for Azure Stack HCI in February of this year. But we also have an offering, which is kind of similar, which is our Windows Server HCI offering, right? But what's the difference? So um, first up, this new operating system, it remains an enterprise class software defined hyperconverged infrastructure running the likes of Hyper-V, Storage Space, DirectX and Azure uh, inspired networking. Um, what is really yeah. important about this, this, this new operating system it is, and I can't express this enough, it's delivered as an Azure service, okay? So you consume it from Azure, which was so cool. Uh, Microsoft mm. have the tagline hybrid by design. And I think with the likes of the Azure Stack portfolio and Azure Arc and this offering, like that totally rings true. Um, so Azure Stack HCI has its own resource provider within Azure, meaning that the clusters are represented um, in Azure as their own resources. And you can manage them through the Azure control plane um, using Azure Resource Manager, um, or you can use you know, tools familiar to yourself like Windows Admin Center. So the Azure Stack HCI OS is a, it's a fork in the road from Windows Server OS. And um, they're going their own path. It's an operating system designed specifically to run on hyperconverged infrastructure. Um, and therefore it has like a smaller footprint as well, right? So smaller footprint um, at foreign OS, which reduces the attack vector from a security perspective, but it's really, really focused on being that operating system for hyperconverged infrastructure um, with hybrid integration into the cloud. And we'll see a lot faster feature updates, et cetera. So it will, the other thing that's pretty cool about it, right? Yeah. Is the solution will always be kept up to date with um, feature updates coming sort of annual, biannually. Um, so you'll never get into the sort of out of support type scenario that you might do with Windows yeah. Server. So that's the new, the new Azure Stack HCI OS. Okay, that makes that sense. Help? Yeah. yeah, and so, well, so what you're saying really, it's about um, simplicity ultimately and longevity. You know, those are the kind of things that I kind of picking up from what you're saying and actually it allows people to create those computing environments at scale when they need it. So really yeah. that's kind of what, hey, you know, the, the Azure Stack HCI, Doing, but it's also Windows Server, yeah, HCI, and so yes. is that because again, Azure Stack is that big scale, right? But then, it, what's the point of still having Windows Server HCI because yeah, it does exist and it you know and it offers lots of benefits in itself. So uh, yeah, some of the benefits are the same, but then the way it works is slightly different. So so you know so, yeah. so what's the sort of use case of why you would still use that? So Windows Server, Server will very much continue to focus on being that operating system for Windows workloads. Um, but also we are, for instance, the, the focus is very much on on-premise infrastructure with not really much need to have a sort of hybrid either connection to Azure or the need to enhance or add Azure capabilities to those workloads. Also a key difference is that Azure Stack HCI allow um means that you have to be connected to azure once every 30 days for billing purposes um, and also you mm. consume them completely different right you azure stack hci you consume as a service so it's consumption based and some customers don't mm. want to consume their operating systems in that way um so they they would stick with windows server um you've also got you know the great sort of uh benefit of the unlimited windows server guest operating vm licenses that you get with yeah. the likes of windows server so that's obviously key if you've got a whole load of windows workloads they're on-prem you don't really have any need to be um, integrating them with azure then windows server is still the one both of them have and will continue to have feature rich roadmaps but really it's about how do you want to consume that operating license what mm. is your roadmap into the future um, do you have a desire to use Azure services and sort of bring your on-premises workloads into the Azure portal to manage at scale? I think that's kind okay. of like the difference. So, and, and again, just thinking through what you just said with those two questions, it's kind of, it's almost like the Windows Server HCI um, gives you, it's kind of like almost that first step towards that complete environment but actually it means that you can still have 
on prem and the things you need, um, at, you know, at your fingertips with what you've already got. Because you've probably got a bit of liquidity infrastructure as well. And yeah. so it kind of brings all of that along to a place where you can start using those cloud features as and when you need them. But you're not necessarily tied into that sort of monthly billing. You know, yes. you're not you're not going. You're, you're dipping your toe in the yeah. water as opposed to yeah. jumping in. And with Azure yeah. Stack HCI, you're jumping all the way in. So that's kind of yeah. it, it's kind of it's it's kind of like giving people the option to, to move at the pace they're ready to. Either they're going to move along a little bit and get ready for the cloud, you know, the, the cloud computing to, you know, back up and all that kind of stuff that you might want. Yep. And then as your, you know, as your Stack HCI is all the way in with it all build monthly and um, kind of yeah. at scale. Okay. I think if you right, okay, so, put them on a spectrum and like Azure is here and Windows Server yeah. is here and Azure Stack HCI yeah. is kind of in the middle. And I think that's a great point that you make. Windows Server, there are still, you know, Microsoft are, uh, working on integrations with Windows Admin Center to allow you to take advantage of some Azure services like Azure Backup mm -hmm. if you want, but you don't need to have a sort of Azure, whereas with Azure Stack HCI, you may need to be familiar, right, with Azure billing and uh, Azure subscriptions and yeah. tenants, etc. Like you need to be full on in there, really. Yeah. And I must admit, I do love the fact that there's unlimited VMs with data center because uh, that, that's kind of, again, a great place to start that hybrid journey um mm -hmm. you know it's a really cost effective way of doing that so let, let's talk about like the ideal scenario for uh an azure stack hci you know where you know when would be best to use that yeah so i would say that um so actually the use cases for azure stack hci are quite wide and varied i think its ability to start at like two nodes switch list makes it perfect for those robo use cases, right? So where you need small um, infrastructures in your offices or factories, et cetera, and then you need to be able to manage them uh, from like a global perspective, potentially. So you want to be able to manage them from the Azure portal. Yeah. So you just said robo, right? Yes. And, uh, Remote uh, what, what office. Remote office and branch. Robo. That, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I just yeah. knew it as a remote office, but you're calling it Robo. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Still, yeah. Like, so like, maybe like I a, think like I, a remote cop type thing or something. I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. And you, you know, I really, really hope it's remote office and branch office, but I'm pretty sure that it is. Um, yeah. yeah. And no, then, it's, you know, I mean, it's cool. It's, it's a new one on me. That's all Lisa. Sorry. Yeah. So, okay. Perfect. Right. Sorry. I've broken so your train of thought. You, 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 you go back. So it can start as little as two nodes, right? But then you can scale right up to 16 nodes and it can run your most high performant applications, you know, obviously perfect with SQL, for instance, um, and sort of everything in between. But I would say the ideal use case is where you want that integration with Azure. You want to be able to apply the likes of Azure update management to your uh, workloads running on-prem and the workloads that you have in the cloud. You want to be able to take advantage of some of the Azure governance and management capabilities, right? So you want to use an Azure Monitor for maybe your workloads that you already have in Azure, but also your Azure Stack HCI's on-prem. And what I love yeah. about in, in Azure from a governance perspective is the ability to use tags and policies, et cetera. And I think being able to bring that capability to on-prem infrastructure and not have two separate sort of governance and management models across the two, I think that's so powerful. Um, and then, yeah. you know, there's integration with Azure services, but then there's also the ability to run Azure Kubernetes service, the PaaS service on Azure Stack HCI. So I think it's where you want to modernize your infrastructure to hyper-converged infrastructure. You want to start to take advantage of Azure management and monitoring capabilities. And maybe you've got some virtual machines and workloads that need to remain on-prem. You're not really going to change the way they run, but you'd like to enhance how they are operated and managed. And then potentially you're looking at containers and Kubernetes and you want to start to take advantage of AKS. Um, and yeah. you want the ability to manage from both Windows Admin Center, but also in the Azure portal. So I would say that's the sort of perfect use case for Azure Stack HCI. I mean, you know, that, that actually is pretty crystal clear. But no, thanks for explaining that. And also, you know, this is how I know that you're you're um, you're a proper uh, geeky girl. Do you know? Because you you said you love governance on servers. Uh, there's not many, <laughs> you know, that you know. When you, when you were growing up, you probably never thought you'd be saying that, right? That wasn't a thing that's no. there. But you, you love governance on, on in the cloud. Like that's how I we love... know 
I love policies. how I love how I Azure it. makes it easy, visual. Yeah. That's what I like. When I was when I was first sort of um, introduced to tags and policies, etc., within Azure for Azure workloads, I was like, "Wow, that would ser- that would solve so many problems on prem." <laughs> yeah, <that's- laughs> you know, because loads of people, if they're if they're being brutally honest, they've got a list of their infrastructure maybe in a spreadsheet somewhere that they don't really update that much. Um, you know, and um, I think this just makes it a lot uh, easier. It, visual, it's, it's nice looking, you know, the Azure portal is pretty, um, but yeah. yes, maybe I do need to get out more. Yeah, well, look, hopefully lockdown will be finished and we'll be able to do that soon. Um, <laughs> although to be fair, our first phone call was um, you were walking through a park in Dundee, which looked very nice. So, um, you know, you're not just trapped in that room with your cats. Um, no, I am <laughs> trying to get out. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, and so um, stretch clustering is something we're hearing a lot about for disaster yes. recovery. I mean, that's one yeah. of the technical features of just like HCI, but you know, what's its significance? What's its support? What's its importance, Lisa? Yeah, so the stretch clustering is something that people have been asking for from a Windows operating system for a very, very long time. Um, but the Azure Stack HCI stretch cluster um, will provide automatic failover to restore production quickly and without the need for manual intervention. And that's really what everyone's looking for, isn't it, when it comes to disaster recovery. So you've got the likes of storage replica providing um, the replication of volumes across sites for disaster recovery with all servers remaining in sync. You can choose synchronous or asynchronous replication. Um, which is which is pretty awesome but it yeah it gives that sort of native disaster recovery and business continuity to the azure stack hci clusters um and they provide that site local resiliency as well so each site is a separate fault domain um providing that additional redundancy so i think it's like a it's a really great strength of the new azure stack hci and i think again there's a difference between windows server and azure stack hci that that capability has come to Azure Stack HCI and the capabilities that will continue to come to that new OS are these new and exciting features and the ones that you really want when you're running a hyper-converged infrastructure. Um, so you'll see a lot more additions like that coming to Azure Stack HCI, I think. But yes, this is a big yeah. win for Azure Stack HCI, something that people have been looking for for a while there are obviously a few requirements with it so you need to have the yeah. identical number of servers and hardware configuration in both sites and um you need to have a minimum of four nodes and that's another thing to yeah. be aware of networking obviously is always important so you should have enough bandwidth um but yeah it's a great new feature that everyone's been super excited about with azure stack hci <laughs> cool um, it just goes to show that Microsoft does listen sometimes when people ask for things. It, it does. It does eventually come. Um, yes. the, um, and so, uh, the, you know, the, it's just that like HCI. Obviously, it's hardware that it goes on, but then the OS is in the cloud. And mm. how 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 does it use the cloud? With you know, in that yeah. in start, how, how does it? You know, that's kind of a question that people ask a lot, right? So yeah, how would you answer this? That? Is- this is where things do tend to get a little bit confusing just because of the new concepts that are coming out right like with azure arc so you've got azure arc for servers you've got azure arc for data services and we've got new azure arc application services happening but if we take a look at azure arc for service servers first um azure arc actually allows you to bring azure management and capability to your virtual machines wherever they're running. So, I mean, that could be um, a bare metal infrastructure, could be a virtual machine in AWS. Um, Azure Arc for servers is allowing like customers, say they really love the way that Azure does um, Mm. Azure update management for Windows Server or like the governance, the monitoring, et cetera. And they're like, I'd like to use that model across all my workloads, but I'd like to use, you know, have my workloads in different places. Um, and Azure Arc for servers allows you to do that. Now, when it comes to Azure Stack HCI OS, obviously that's the best platform to use that on because it's built in. Um, so it's built in. Um, like we said before, you can view your cluster as a resource in Azure and then interact with it how you would with Azure um, services. So PowerShell, Azure CLI, yeah. you know, 
all the sort of new and fun ways to to do infrastructure is cold. Um, but then you can also start to use the likes of Azure Site Recovery, <clears throat> Azure Monitor, Azure Backup update management and um soon as well i think it's still in preview but these things change rapidly so we should check um azure security center right so yeah that's super powerful being able to take the likes of azure security center and apply that to your azure stack hci so i would say that's how it integrates um but then you've also got other ways to integrate so you can now get aks azure kubernetes service on azure stack hci and then when you've got aks you will um there are a few services currently in preview for azure arc like azure app service azure functions that you'll be able to bring down and run with on that containerized um, platform so yeah there's a whole different bunch of options out there um yeah. on how you're going to be able to sort of consume azure services in the future on different platforms outside of a microsoft data center um yeah. but you'll get the the most sort of seamless integration with that on the likes of Azure Stack HCI because the operating system itself is also an Azure service. So again, you know, I'm turning this into my lane and talk, right? But it's almost like, you know, it's like when you go to the, you know, the sweet shop and they've got a pick and mix. It's a bit like that. Yeah. Right? You're, you're, yeah. you're going in there and you can pick and choose any of those services as you need them as much as you want. So that's really yeah. the advantage of that. So that, that makes sense. So thank you for doing that to me. So, um, you know, when you think about your data, right? Everyone, yeah. like your data is very important. Well, it, it is and it yes. isn't important uh, because our data is, uh, my personal data, I'm sure is absolutely everywhere. Um, but actually, yeah. um, it, it just is. I think, you know, I think that's the reality of being human being today, right? Your, your data footprint is dreadful. Um, but actually people get very passionate about their data like, and especially when they come to their business data and they're putting things, you know, yeah. workloads in, into the cloud and they're kind of going, well, you know, where is my data actually, like, well, what, where is my data going with Azure Stack? Like, yeah. you know, I, and that's also one of the reasons why people are, you know, I want to have my still on-prem, you know, I want my old database kept in my back office because I know it's safer there, apparently. Um, but yeah, data is a big issue. So what, what would you say when someone says to you, you know, where does my data go um, with Azure yeah. Stack HCI? Yeah, so it's really important to define what data you mean. I think as soon as someone hears that it's connected to Azure, they're like, oh my God, mm. they can access all my data. And that's just not the case. So um, if you choose to run the Azure Stack HCI OS operating system and you don't start to consume, or you start even if you start to consume Azure services, right? The only data that's going back, unless you do or add something, is metered data for billing purposes. So the only data that's going back is how many cores do you have operational so we can charge you? And if you're using, for instance, Azure Kubernetes service, um, how many worker nodes do you have running? Again, so we can charge you. Um, so the mm. only data that goes back is meter data for billing purposes. Um, and unless you start to take advantage, right, of Azure Stack, uh, Azure Backup, for instance. So, and this is where sort of the difference, there is another product in the Azure Stack family called Azure Stack Hub, right? So Azure mm -hmm. Stack HCI, Azure Stack HCI has to be connected to Azure at least once every 30 days for billing purposes. But if you don't consume and start sending, like, like you make a decision, to start sending your data to Azure, either for backup or to do mass analytics on or, or whatever, your data will yeah. remain on-prem. If you need to be what we, describe as completely disconnected. You want an air gap between Azure and yourselves. And we see this in like the defense space quite a lot. And um, then yeah. Azure Stack Hub is the what Azure Stack Hub is the product for you because that's effectively Azure in your own data center. It brings with it the portal, uh, Azure Stack Resource Manager, the marketplace. It's like Azure in your data center. And therefore yeah. you can operate entirely disconnected. But Azure Stack HCI it, it, if you want all your sending back is your meter data. Okay, so you don't have to you put your data where you want, basically. Yeah, so keep your keep your data <laughs> on your virtual machines in it, your infrastructure. You know, I keep it in my other room. <laughs> Who was um, this is Zach. I thought you could hear him because he just he likes to meow rather loudly to let you know he's entered the room. Um, Brilliant. Hey Zach. 
Oh, he's very he's cute. <laughs> um, yeah, he's, he's not bothered. He's not impressed by me anyway. That's fine. Um, no, usually <laughs> they're either completely like running across the back, knocking things down on the desk, yeah. running in front of the video, or they're completely disinter disinterested. There's no in between. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, well, I've, I've completely lost my train of thought now. But, uh, obviously, Zach is there. Data. Uh, right, okay. So, um, I think you sort of answered actually about the connectivity piece that, about how, how HCI works with the value. It's once every 30 days. So, I think we don't need to probably go into that. But um, if we talk about the management options, maybe within Azure Stack HCI, yeah. um, you know, what, what, how does that work? What's the difference there? Yeah, so it's quite a nice mix, actually, because you can use the tools that you're familiar with. So you can use Windows Admin Center and you can use PowerShell, etc. And in fact, if you wanted to, you could never go into Azure to manage it. Um, so you can use all your traditional tools that you're used to, but you have the additional option of also managing from Azure. So yeah. logging into your Azure portal, viewing your clusters and managing them from there. Windows Admin Center, uh, Windows Server, um, you have all the tools that you're you're used to, right? Windows Admin Center, maybe a bit of System Center. Although I know Microsoft are focusing a lot of their attention on making Windows Admin Center the way the place to go again, because people have fed back about the numerous different portals, etc. And um, not to do a shameless plug, but uh, Dell Technologies have focused really heavy, really heavy on our integration with um, Windows Admin Center as well with our Open Manage integration because. At the end of the day, like we get that Azure Stack HCI is an integrated Azure experience. We don't want those two experiences to be like night and day. So we want to provide the most seamless sort of managing the hardware, like, you know, the click of a button type, uh, type process. So we work really hard on that integration so that customers can focus on the value of Azure Stack HCI, which is this new integration into Azure. Um, but yeah, you can still use familiar tools, familiar skills. Like you said e earlier, it is a nice way to dip your toe in. It is yeah. a nice way to sort of start to pick which Azure services make sense and sort of bring them into your way of working. Yeah, and that will ultimately save you a bit of money as well, which is what people love to do. So let's talk about pricing and billing yeah. and kind of like, you know, obviously, um, it's more complicated. It's less complicated. What, you know, what, 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 what's, what's, what's the billing piece all about? I think <laughs> right now it, uh, it's most complicated that it will ever be. I think it's going to get better. So right now, because it is an Azure service, you pay for it on a consumption basis. So you pay $10 or the local equivalent, um, per core, um, per month. And that's Microsoft Azure pricing. So then, you know, if you have any like discounts on your Azure service or whatever, go talk to Microsoft. They can they can help you out. But that's that's what Don't is charged for. Anybody any discounts? <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's the that's the charge for the operating system, right? So everything in the OS. Now that's the operating system. If you then run workloads on top, you have to license those. And again, here's a key difference as well, right? So if you've got Windows Server Data Center, for instance. My, uh, licenses the OS, but then you also get unlimited guest um, OSs for Windows servers, right? Um, whereas an Azure Stack HCI OS, and I think it's kind of like bringing it more in line with maybe other hypervisors in the market when you think about it. Also, when you think about the fact that it, it will be receiving far more updates per year than Windows Server, you will be getting more capability brought, brought to it, etc. But that's for the OS. So then if you put workloads on top, if you put Linux workloads on top, pretty cheap, right? If you're only running Linux workloads, that's an, a nice way to do it. If you've got Windows workloads, it depends then on how much like Windows operating system, uh, Windows VMs you're running. If you are running a couple, you can maybe license them individual. And I'm sure that Microsoft will at some point bring out other options to license those and bring them in line with consumption-based licensing. But if you've got, you know, a ton of those, then it might be worthwhile applying a Windows Server Data Center license to that to just give you an unlimited amount of Windows VM OS, right? And then yeah. it depends what you consume on top of that. So if you're going to start to consume Azure Kubernetes as a service, then you're going to pay a consumption cost for that service. And I know for Azure Stack HCI, you just pay for the worker nodes. So you don't pay for any of it. This is quite cute. This is quite 
like nice actually you don't pay for any of the huh yeah you don't pay for any of the like the infrastructure that you have to put on Azure Stack HCI to run AKS, right? You're only paying for the worker nodes that deliver you that PaaS like service, which I think is great. I think that was a, that's a good, that was a good move from Microsoft. Um, yeah. And therefore, you know, if you consume other Azure services, um, you'll, you'll pay for those. So there's a little bit more layers to it than maybe there is with Windows Server. And if you're not ready to sort of do that consumption-based type pricing, um, then maybe Windows Server is, is for you. Um, but that's how currently you build up the pricing. Simple. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do well, actually have I, a nice, I did, there are some nice visuals and slides out there that try and sort yeah. of describe. But like I say, this is very new. Yeah. It's a very new concept. So I think it's only yeah. going to get clearer. Cool. And I suppose if people really want to get into it, they can give you and they can give the Dell team a ring and uh, they can uh, get you to do it for them, which uh, ultimately will exactly. make life a lot easier. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So um, I think we've shamelessly plugged, uh, plugged, uh, plugged what you do for a day job as well. So uh, it's all right. No, you know, we try our best. Um, so look, we've uh, we've chatted all things Azure Stack HCI. So thank you, Lisa, for your knowledge and wisdom. That's okay. um, certainly, um, I've learned a lot, which um, isn't hard. But yeah, we appreciate it. Um, so um, just before just before we let you escape, um, we do a little thing at the uh, towards the end of every episode, which we call the meme review. Uh, this is where the guys that um, help me produce this fantastic uh, live stream. Uh, in the infinite wisdom, like to sort of take the mickey out of me a little bit. Um, what we also would like is obviously anybody in the audience, if you've got a, a, a silly server meme or you've got a comment about the memes that we show, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. So um, yeah. what we do is we, we need, the way this works, Lisa, is, is that, the, like I said, the producers flash up a, a meme and then we'll try and decipher it and um, usually i look a bit silly and usually my guest is 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 the wiser uh, of the two of us so let's have a look at the first meme okay. here we go Depend <laughs> dependencies dependencies <laughs> everywhere <laughs> so um yeah so I, I sort of understand what this dependency is but like, what, what's what's this saying to you i mean my, my dependency is you being able to answer this question so to be honest, my first thought was, you know, when you ask a technical person a question um, and they answer with it, it depends. That was yeah. where my brain went first. But okay. from a dependencies um, point of view, um, I think in like the server world and where we are today, the one of the biggest problems in terms of figuring out how to modernize infrastructure or applications or move them to the cloud is dependencies because dependencies are everywhere like and so like <laughs> i i get that and I, I enjoy that i also love a bit of toy story so yes i'm a fan yeah. of this meme yeah you can't go wrong with with, with, with buzz and woody no problem. right okay exactly. so uh, dependencies are everywhere memes are everywhere so let's go to our second meme right here we I go like it. uh please wait while the wizard installs the software and i like that's gandalf i can get that but um i don't like the fact he's using an apple mac right straight away i'm just saying <laughs> Sorry, that's not cool. It's not. Yeah, cool. we're going to. Yeah, we need to edit this meme and do a bit of photoshopping and make that a Windows um, for the surface. Yeah. So Windows sign, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. I but think, yeah, yeah, we're I, I'm, actually, I'm proud. I also get. I also get this one because you, and I'm not technical. Remember, but you use a wizard when you're installing things quite often. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. Software's word, um, and that's what's used to install the software. Because for some people, people like me, I just say yes. I'd look to you, like to use the wizard. Next, next, done. <laughs> that's but that's yeah, really what wiz wizards are for. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to be fair, if I could get a wizard to do stuff around the house, that'd be great. Uh, that, you yes. know what I mean? Just uh, not... oh my god, a living wizard. That's what I need that's in my life. That's 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 what we need yes. um, yeah like if yeah. you could uh, sort of magic me up a bit of lunch that would be great um yeah. okay I so thinking, i was beginning uh, to think i needed a you know started to get a, a home husband or something but what i clearly need is just an at-home wizard 
the, well, yeah, exactly. It's much more practical and also as well, you can make them say disappear when you want as well, which, uh, <laughs> exactly. you know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> well, that, you like that. I click my fingers and, and the, the, he disappeared as well. That was brilliant. Uh, it's mm, almost like magical. there's somebody producing this show. Um, <laughs> well, Lisa, thank you so much for going through today. Um, obviously, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. I think maybe if we just wrap up, um, yep some notes i've made which uh, you know are uh, dreadful uh, quite frankly so you might have to help me out on my, on my notes honestly this is one of the places i so okay. I, I'm, I'm dyslexic so my notes actually i write them and then i look back and mark because i actually don't know what they mean which is that's a, that's a brilliant skill to have Not but helpful. basically <laughs> Uh, yeah well exactly uh, it's all about choice um it's all about the right product for the customer at the point in time what they're ready to do where whether yep. they're ready to go on a small cloud journey or a big cloud journey um so it's all about choice it's that you know it's that pick and mix of services um azure stack hci is there it's it's as scalable as you need it to be um and then there's also windows server hci if you're kind of taking baby steps so that's kind of really yep. sort of me summarizing it. I've also put here as well, and you know, I think um, I'm going to steal this, uh, obviously it's already a Microsoft thing, but hybrid by design. Um, yeah. And I think that's kind of maybe the thing. Line. Well, that, now, now it's my tagline, I've stolen it. Um, but, um, but, but, but yeah, I think it's really about people understanding that it's not just on-prem, it's not just the cloud, it's that bit in the middle yeah. where it seems complicated, but there's lots of options, but actually, if we talk to an expert like Lisa Clark, we will understand what we're doing and we'll get there. And um, so that's what I've taken away from, from today. Um, is there anything I've yep. missed, Lisa? No, I would say that's definitely it. I think it only seems complicated because it's new and because there are so many options. I think just to remember where Windows Server and Azure Stack HCI OS are today, this is as sort of as similar and as close as they will be. Azure Stack HCI will start to sort of diverge and take off at a you know, faster speed than Windows Server. And so therefore it might become clearer, but there are definitely use cases for both. And you just need to, you know, it's the annoying bit, but you need to be super clear on your requirements and what you're looking to, to achieve um, both now and in the future. Um, but yeah, like you say, there is an option for whatever you want to do. Hybrid is here to stay. Um, and yet yeah, on-prem doesn't need to be this separate world. Um, and that's definitely true when it comes to Microsoft. Cool. Well, uh, Lisa, absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. We're very, very grateful. Um, yeah, and I know how busy you are. So um, you making the time to do this has been incredibly, incredibly beneficial to me and hopefully to the audience. Everybody, thanks very much for joining us today on this episode of uh, From the Rocks to the Cloud. And um, we look forward to talking to you again soon. Again, if you've got any things that you want to hear, anything you want to find out, any experts that we need to go and get, let me know. <laughs> we will go and do that. And um, certainly we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks a lot, everybody. Cheers. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>